Hello, everyone, and welcome to the May 22nd Project Jupyter IPython Developers Call. We're following an agenda on Dropbox Paper, um, and we will go ahead and get started with updates on uh, IPython. I think, Thomas, those are your notes, if you want to add anything to what you have in there. Uh, yeah, that was me writing, and uh, basically just to, to thank Matthias, who's put in a bunch of effort recently, both making changes himself and reviewing other people's changes, including mine. Okay, great. Um, doesn't look like there's any updates under notebook. Um, uh, Jessica, do you wanna talk about Jupyter Lab? At, um, Darian, I think you have some notes in there too, but Jessica, go ahead. Uh, so let's see, last week we had a PR sprint. Um, I think uh, this coincided also with the uh, uh, PyCon sprint. So I think as we were, we were merging in pull requests, new ones were coming in. So uh, I think t all in all, I don't think we necessarily, we've reduced the total as much, but it's good we've, we have a good flow at least coming in of new PR. So um, that's been part of what we've been up to. Um, Darian, feel free to chime in with your notes as well. Uh, yeah, we've had a lot of new PRs coming in, but um, that sort of masks that we've also had a lot of PRs being merged. So it's 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 pretty great. Um, I've been working on this thing that I've mentioned before, which is just support for multiple windows. But as um as I'm doing it, I realized uh, in in two spots we have these recovery options that come up in the application if say your state database is corrupt. And right now uh, we need a different one if say you have a window name collision and you have to basically tell the application to go somewhere else. But these things coming up before the application is ready were never themed before. So I, I, I introduced this idea of a recovery theme last week and Ian and I talked about it a bit, but actually that, that, that seemed in retrospect to be a little bit over engineered. The reality is we just should just have the theme manager allow you to set a theme and load a theme even before the application is ready, just as soon as that theme is there. So, um, so I'm refactoring the theme manager to keep the API the exact same, um, but transparently to just show, to render theme uh, optimistically as soon as it can. And that way, even if you have pre applications starting things happening, like warning messages or whatever, they will get the benefit of being fully styled and usable. Um, this change isn't an API change and no one should notice anything different, except that um, now there's no period where you don't have uh, the UI styled and usable. But I say that as though it's done. It's not, but it will be. And I'd just like to add, we're doing some major refactoring of how documents uh, work in JupyterLab, and these are some big backwards incompatible changes, but we think it'll make things a lot more uh, consistent. That's uh, just about to land, just about to start doing the review process and landing uh, this week. And just like to call out Paul, thanks especially for Paul mentoring a ton of people, uh, pushing in a lot of uh, first, good first issue PRs from PyCon. Defense, Carol. Oh. And Carol? Good. Fantastic. Thanks, Carol, Thank thanks, Carol too. And uh, Paul gets all the credit. <laughs> Could you blame all the blame? Oh, right. the blame. Andy wrote a haiku about it. Anything that was wrong, Could my fault. Well, it's all. Could someone describe at a high level what some of, like, are there, if they're backwards incompatible changes, it might be useful to have an idea of the, of the ways in which, like, that's going to break things? Yeah, I'm, I'm planning on putting a, a small paragraph or two together for the release notes. Um, but, uh, in short, uh, one of the things we've done is made all the document uh, handling in JupyterLab, all the document widgets have a consistent paradigm of uh, a toolbar and a content area. 
So, and, and we pulled some of the functionality from the notebook up to a higher level to be consistent across all documents. Um, so this affects some name changes for how to work with notebooks, for example, to, because we made the names more generic to work across all documents. Um, and there's a slight difference in how document widgets are constructed. And again, the purpose here is to make it so that any document can have a consistent toolbar it, it, the, the toolbars are consistent across all documents. Um, the, the styling and how to work with them, not necessarily the buttons, of course. And, uh, and the way to access the actual content area is consistent across all document widgets. So again, we'll, I'm putting together a paragraph or two for, for, for the release notes. Will those also expose a similar functionality as the, uh, um, the very helpful, I want to add a button to a notebook example in the docs. Will, will they by default all expose that, that kind of behavior then? Uh, I didn't even, I, I, yeah, I wasn't thinking about changing the, the docs. That's right. I forgot about the docs that uh, are, that are saying how to add a button as a simple extension. Yeah, those will be a lot easier now, I think. But I mean, if you if you opt into I am a main content area widget document, will you just have that? Will your menu already be exposed and other people be able to? Yes, yes. The idea is that all main content area widgets have a toolbar uh, as a top level attribute and a context object as a top level attribute and a content area as a top level attribute, and so anybody would be able to if they can get a handle on your on your widget, be able to add stuff to the toolbar. Oh, it's amazing. That'll be great. So that's part of the consistency that we were striving for. And is it possible to have no toolbar? Or is this a, yes. you must have a toolbar now? So okay. everybody has a toolbar. It's possible to hide the toolbar. Very, you just take the toolbar and dot hide it. And, and then it goes away, though. We're trying, it, Brian really wants there to be a consistent uh, small space for a collapse toolbar, even if so you can hide the toolbar to completely eliminate it. Um, Brian also wants there to be a consistent collapse toolbar state where it's essentially a small white border at the top, even if it doesn't have buttons on there. So by default, if you don't have buttons, it's a collapse toolbar, which is a, just a small white uh, uh, fringe border on the top of your content area. And it's very easy to even hide that just by taking the dot toolbar and calling dot, uh, dot hide. Awesome. Thank you. Yep. Over and out. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess I guess real quick to tail on that. Um, haven't been able to do much, you know, actual work on Jupyter stuff, but I have been playing with uh, the theme system and how that can be made dynamic and how that can play with. And we convert to start getting us back to where you know you can start adding fonts and styles and stuff like that. Um, so that's what I made that button for. Basically, you've got a notebook style tab, and you can set fonts for things. Um, there's that is uncovering a few side cases of of what's currently in the Jupyter Lab um, CSS styling regime, but uh, I also plan to backport that to NB Convert so that you can um, use it against some other front end CSS selectors. Uh, so that gets us like half of the way to a presentation piece of equipment. Um, under the hood, it's using something called JSS, which is a, uh, it can be a full JavaScript implementation of CSS, but I've just been using it as the, the JSON version. Um, and it supports nice things like nesting and all the variables and subclassing and, and all that stuff. Um, so that might be eventually when they get around to it, something that becomes mime typable. And uh, that sounds like a really nice thing for people to be able to create with their language of interest and be able to inject style into how they're going to show their notebook. Um, so that's been fun. <laughs> oh, one more thing, Jason. Um, can we spend some time with the Jupyter Lab folks and look at the single user notebook mode within Jupyter Lab. Um, uh, I want to just make sure that I know how you get to that, how you can basically configure it and set it up to be as similar to the old notebook 
as possible because um, there was some there was a lot of positive feedback about Jupiter Lab, but in the Education Summit in particular, um, there was still a lot of interest in the clean single user um, linear mode. So I think it's yeah, and I think I think a lot of people in the documentation have been encouraged just to go. To, on single document mode with like a notebook and just kind of push everything to the side. Um, you can, we, we think we were thinking about setting that up with like a workspace as well. Yeah, I, 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 it, I think it's worth looking at and seeing how complicated it is to do that versus maybe doing a custom theme that is just simplicity or whatever. Um, Would it be enough to just make it open up in single document mode by default? Possibly. And, that, then, that yeah. and then the only way to change it is to use a menu item to like go to the more advanced. Yeah, I mean, I think we just need to look at, I mean, it's been a while since I've looked at all the different modes and um, I just want to kind of have a, yeah. you know, yeah. what Jessica says, what you're saying, um, yeah. and then figure I mean, out. Maybe, there, this is yeah, a sorry. good conversation for next week maybe. When we're yeah, together. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, D Darian was working on something related to this where one could configure like a, a setup for your for the way your your work workspace is um, is organized, um, and so we can kind of try to formalize one of those workspaces as Jason has described to be single document mode um, with a notebook. Cool. Yeah, I mean, the, the other element of that is, you know, anything that goes in the sidebar. Um, so I, I think, yeah, there's opening up to a notebook, but I think having a main content area file browser um, that, you know, had big old launcher buttons for all your files in your directory, uh, everybody's used to that interface, right? Um, instead of a, you know, breadcrumbed tree. Uh, so that if you're if you're trying to consume both what tree does and what a simple notebook does, you know that would that would really answer the mail a lot there, um, and you know gradually reveal the rest of the behavior as you need it. Cool. So I'm assuming there's nothing on widgets. Uh, I just posted a sorry. Are we already do widgets. I can. To say there's no new updates before I take off. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Thanks Jason. Jason. I'll do uh, services for Peter. Um, he's been reworking some of the Docker stacks and simplifying um, moving content from each individual README into a, um, a uh, read the docs um, deployment. Somebody's adding a note. Oh, I've been working on it too. Forgot to mention that. Oh, okay. So. Yeah. And Jessica. So, um, and then as far as Jupyter Hub goes, um, we're getting slowly trickling in feedback on the beta two that we released last week and working through stuff as they come up. Um, doing some ongoing work on my binder deployments when around the areas of image cleaning and node stability, um, which is more uh, less customer facing or user facing, but more um, maintainability from our side. And um, we've been recently with all the conferences and stuff, getting people who are speaking about Jupyter Hub outside of the core team. And they're providing us a lot of valuable feedback and of what users are asking them and what, um, how they're using Jupyter Hub. So that's nice too. And that is it. Okay, sounds good. Um, uh, do you want to go ahead with the updates for NB Convert? All right. So um, a while back, actually, uh, Pandoc 2.0 came out and uh, changed the way that the that it interpreted RST, which broke some of our tests. Um, Paul pushed uh, someone. I think that might have been actually at PyCon. Someone made a nice PR to fix up the tests, but the but that doesn't actually fix the underlying problem that uh, Pandoc 2.0. Uh, is uh, giving us different semantics. And so we're going to need to figure out how to handle that um, and come up with a more general plan for that. I don't think we have to worry about another major release of Pandoc anytime soon since it's 
took a, quite a few years to get to 2.0 even, um, but still we should have an idea about that. Uh, there are some other things I have a PR open for some issues that had come up in paper mill, uh, specifically around kernel managers and whatnot um, being configurable. And so, um, and I'll be working on that, but there's also just a lot of backlog PRs that uh, people have made that I'm going to try to take some time to get through uh, this next week, uh, probably feeding into a bit of next week. Uh, the aim being to sometime soon get a new release of Envy Convert out. Thomas, were you raising your hand? Sorry, I was muted there. No, I'm just uh, I'm just pulling up these headphones. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, but yeah, so right. that that that, uh, that PR uh, uh, doesn't actually produce anything. It's just the whole Paul, your audio is cutting. It you, it's there. We hear you, but uh, it sounds like you're far away. And then occasionally very close. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you could you, okay mm, forget it no it, yeah I it's, it's oh, I, I think, think it's interpreting you as uh be hearing yourself and so it's cutting you off <laughs> something like that or it's picking up the audio is picking up from somewhere the source is some somewhere other than your your headphones or where you're planning for it to be so at any rate um yeah we can try we can try again a little later if you want to troubleshoot otherwise we can we can chat about it offline um okay so uh, we are getting close to the end of the end of the agenda. Is there any? And at this point, we'll go over um, anything that um, hasn't been covered so far. It looks like a couple people have notes in there, and also um, just an opportunity for anyone else to add in there. Um, Jessica, do you want to talk any further about the website meeting or anything to add on that? Uh, just that uh, we'll, we've been working on it and we uh, will be talking to, to all of you about um, the web, about Project Jupiter and the website um, individually probably coming up in the next couple weeks. So expect to hear that from us, um, unless Tim has anything else to add. No, okay. that's good. Um, I'm just, we just worked out a little <clears throat> script. We're going to do some interviews and sort of collect everybody's opinion of it and then code it and look at look at what the whole project thinks rather than just the people that were touching the website design earlier. Okay, sounds good. Um, looks like there's some user testing um, going on also. And um, M, do you have, do you want to talk about Interact? Sure. So um, in the past couple of weeks, uh, Kyle and I have been um, working, and some other people have been working on getting Interact to work on the Jupyter server. So there's now um, the Jupyter on Interact package that if you install it, then you can just Jupyter space Interact, uh, N T E R A C T, uh, and that will be running Interact uh, based uh, front end on the Jupyter server. On top of that, there's a nice uh, dev mode. So if you have it editably installed um, and you run it with dash dash dev as well, it's going to start up a hot reloading Webpack server under the hood. Um, that's getting a little bit tricky. Um, and if anyone has some ideas about how to manage that, uh, we'd love some contributions. But right now, the logs are sort of interspersed. And um, yeah, it's, it's still a really nice dev experience. So definitely uh, check it out, play around. It'll be fun. Excited Woo! to have another like Jupyter app that is uh, connected to the ecosystem, like on the actual server. Yeah. Um, what sort of issues are you having with the hot reloading? The hot reloading itself isn't a problem. The problem is that Webpack occasionally seems, it seems like it might have a memory leak. And so when Webpack crash crashes, uh, then you have to restart the whole server. Um, okay. And then, uh, so if there's a way around that, uh, that'd be an interesting thing to try to address. No, 
that's it's not too bad it's still a really nice experience but um occasionally yeah. you run into this weird mode where when it crash if webpack ever crashes then you have to just exit out of everything mm -hmm. and when you say hot reloading it, it means you don't have to uh refresh the page yep. cool for at least some of the things if you have uh, any changes to your state model then it has then it automatically refreshes the page for you yeah. but um but yeah the uh, anything that's not state touching should not require touching should not require manually reloading the page. Amazing. Um, do you have any sense of the feature parity with um, Interact for Web and the classic notebook? There's a lot that needs to be done on Interact for Web. I'm not sure yet if you can change the title of a notebook. We were like that, that, that's surprising that that's not a feature, but uh, it turned out to be slightly trickier than we expected to implement. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's the beginning of this project, and the idea is yeah. like let's keep moving forward on it and uh, like reusing those components. It's always nice, and like mm -hmm. there's our uh, and the develop on Interact has also made its way like in terms of the VDOM stuff into Jupyter Lab, and so it seems yeah. like a nice healthy way for the, this ecosystem to evolve. Yeah, another. Another thing related to cross front end. Uh, so code mirror no longer accepts new modes. So there is no way to get new syntax and added to an official distribution. Uh, Cause Marin has no interest in that anymore. And I don't blame him because there's a lot of people that are just like, why don't you put my crazy AS 400, you know, whatever. So anyhow, um, we, as the, as the gatekeepers of pan language agnostic stuff, um, and heavy users of code mirror. Uh, it seems like a Jupyter syntaxes or Jupyter syntax modes or something like that uh, would be a healthy high level thing. This came out of some discussions with them and Kyle on graph is, um, you know, I have a graph is mode that I wrote. It's deeply buried inside of a specifically Jupyter lab renderer, you know, interact is its own renderer. They're both having to solve the, you know, I'm going to serve you two megabytes of JavaScript and script and whatever of graph is, uh, but we could both use the same syntax highlighting, um, which would be very pleasant. So mm -hmm. uh, as a, as an either a new top level or, uh, you know, or hanging off a lab or, you know, wherever it would be cool to um, have a place that, you know, Hey, you've got a kernel for Jupiter. You on lab and an interact, you can't use kernel JS. So, Here's a way that you can get to an actual NPM installable syntax package that your plugin or whatever can actually use at runtime to change how Interact and the, or Code Mirror, and then eventually also um, Monaco if we start using that for for single document editing. So yeah. um, I, I was going to say it might be the case that that quantity of work that needs to happen is better spent on changing the front end editors to all use Monaco once that's a full option, because that's an amount of work that has to be done as well. And Monaco will probably support any arbitrary language. It still and has to indirect. live somewhere. It still has to be a package that lives somewhere. Um, and, it, and you have to put that someplace. Now, yes, Monaco is accepting new modes. So there's that, but uh, I guess I haven't been tracking to the one web worker per cell problem yet. That's been, that's been the bugaboo, right? Uh, there have been a few things that kept us from using Monaco before, but they're all disappearing. One was just the pr a lack of a proper NPM package. Um, I can't remember what the others were, but basically sooner or later, I think that's where we're going to end up because it's just... Um, yeah, it's great. You know, yeah, it's yeah, yeah, exactly. But you know, again, it's here we are. <laughs> we, sure. Interact, classic, Jupyter Lab. We're all using Code Mirror, right? Mm -hmm. Like, there's there's no reason that we need to to not solve that problem now and be a good friend of that project that's been really good to us for the last decade. So. Um, yeah. Sure. No, I, I I'm not. Um, yeah, I don't have any particular objection. I just wanted to bring up the fact that we are headed in a direction. And I don't know if it's been pointed out here, but uh, there is a text editor in Interact, uh, thanks to UV and Kyle, that uh, runs on Monaco. Um, it's not uh, backing the 
notebook cell editing, I don't believe. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so there is an implementation if anyone right. wants With to check it out. Folks, you know, here, basically, each cell would fire up its own web worker. And the memory requirement of that is insane. Um, because that's the, that's the VS Code model, is every plugin gets its own web worker. Uh, mm -hmm. So I don't know. Smarter people than me have not been able to solve that. Yeah, good to know. All right, so anything else um, that wasn't covered into the agenda before we um, talk through events and uh, wrap up the meeting? Um, yes, I actually had one more thing. So okay. I'd been working on um, making a bunch of, partially for the Ju Interact on Jupyter stuff, but also I'm looking into uh, moving Papermill to be a proper Jupyter app. Um, and uh, m more generally, I actually don't know if we have a Traitlets application tutorial or a Jupyter app development tutorial for people who want to do that. And I was wondering, does that exist? Because if not, I will work on creating one in my free time uh, because it's a nice, like it, being able to plug into the config system is nice. And uh, yeah, right now it's a bit tricky. Like you just have to know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if there is any resource for that, someone point me to it. Otherwise, I may create it. I'm not aware of any resource for that. If there is one, I guess it would be in the Traitlet docs, but I don't think there is. OK. Thanks all. Um, all right. So. Um, a reminder to if there were any releases last week, um, any plan for this week or anything that you see coming um, next week to repeat them or to record them rather in the agenda, um, just for the sake of keeping track of those. And um, we'll go ahead and cover um, just a few things on events and conferences. Um, so the uh, best pricing for registration for JupyterCon was extended to May 24th. Um, that was originally supposed to be last week. So um, just wanted to highlight that. Um, please continue adding um, to the conferences and workshops. It looks like there is nothing happening um, in June. Uh, the next event listed is um, Euro Python. Um, Thomas, are you speaking or you've submitted a talk? I've submitted a talk. The, the CFP only closed two days ago. Got so. it. Okay. So they're actually, they're actually out of order though. Uh, SciPy US is before Euro Python chronologically. Oh, sure. I'm in the wrong place. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. No worries. Um, it may have been that the entire list didn't get copied over from last last week's um, list. At any rate, if you um, see any calls for proposals that may interest anyone on the call or anyone in the Jupyter community, please continue adding those to um, the list. And I think that unless there's anything else from anyone, that is it for this week. Um, to Paul put some notes in the chat. I, I'm noticing now much later. Um, sounds like he was having issues with his new laptop. So please take a look at those um, and maybe respond offline. Um, all right. Well, it was good uh, chatting with everyone. I uh, or Nick, were you raising your hand? So um, in, for some of the previous dev meetings, there's been a way for the team to raise issues. Is there a repo or for the the upcoming dev meeting? Is there a, a forum or a doc or something where we can where we can get stuff on the agenda? Or yes, and I will be emailing that today. Right. Yep, uh, there's a Dropbox paper that uh, I've started, and um, I will email that today. <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks, everyone. I hope you have a good rest of your week.